hello guys welcome back to the channel so in today's video we're going to go over the the fourth video in our introduction to autogen crash course so in this video we're going to be looking at a asynchronous function calling within a group chat so the last row we look at how group chat works and we had multiple agents uh, within a group having a conversation with each other right this is the code which you wrote right here right so in this row we're going to have something very very similar to this one but the only difference is that in the last row we had a bunch of tools and these uh, agents were calling these uh, tools tool basically the web browsing tool that enable the agents to browse the internet and these agents were calling this tool asynchronously right so we're going to now go ahead and learn how to make uh, make this tool asynchronous right so that the, the agent can be able to call these functions all these tools asynchronously instead of synchronously uh, synchronously okay within a group chat so that's going to be what we're going to be covering in this video so let's get started with it so we are on this uh, video number four right here we're going to be doing with asynchronous function calling or asynchronous tool calling in autogen so let's get this started. let's get started with it so i'm going to gonna go in here and i'm going to go ahead and create a new file and i'm going to call this one uh part uh underscore 04.py okay so once i have that i'm going to go into the last videos uh content right here. i'm going to go ahead and copy a bunch of things let me just copy everything all the way up here copy all that and then move it in here good okay so let's start all the way from top and let's we are going to add some additional imports to this to be in to be able to use a synchronous uh, uh tool calling okay the first thing i'm going to use you're going to say uh from which this is going to impose a synchronous uh library in python so i'm going to say async uh sync i think i yeah that's what i want sync io that's it so once i have that imported uh we are good to go i also need to go ahead and import uh, also I'm also going to, instead of DuckDuckGo, I'm going to going to go ahead and import uh, async uh, DuckDuckGo search. Okay, so we're also going to use this for asynchronous to calling. So once I have all that imported, I can go down here and then we can go ahead and begin to use these tools to perform uh, asynchronous to calling. Okay, so the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is to make sure that we have those tools defined. So to have those tools defined, what I'm going to go ahead and do, I can go ahead and grab the bunch of tools. Okay, I also don't need this for now. We just leave this. All that we need is just this right here. Okay. So once I have this done, uh, what I want to go ahead and do is now go ahead and grab the code for the tools, uh, which is this one right here. I'm going to grab this code right here. Grab this, uh, the web browsing tool code. Grab that and then paste it in here. Good. So I'm going to make this one a synchronous function in the first place. So I'm going to make that a sync, uh, a sync function in Python. So once that is a synchronous function in Python, now instead of using this, you're going to use the asynchronous that, that goes search that we just imported. And then everything else remains the same. Good. So that's basically what you need to do for this part. Now, for the uh, for the function uh, registry for the tool registration, which we, uh, we did in the other tutorial using this uh, method, basically we're going to have the same uh, architecture. So I'm going to go ahead and simply copy this part as well. Copy that. Go back in here again. If you didn't watch the last tutorial, you can follow up the last tutorial. I explained all this in depth, so I'm just going over it quickly so that you don't have to waste a lot of time. So once I have this imported, I'm going to go ahead and begin to use it. So we need to uh, go ahead and import a couple of things. I'm going to import the, let me see right here. Uh, we can actually go ahead and use this directly ready to import anything. We can just use the agents to get access to the method that we want. So I'm going to say at uh, user proxy dot, I'm going to use the function decorator in, in Python. I'm going to use a decorator. A, de a decorator is just a callable that takes an input as a, uh, that takes a callable as an input and it has a callable as an output. So I'm going to use register for execution. You're going to uh, use this decorator right here. You're also going to go ahead and, and use uh, this now you're going to you have you have now registered this function for the user proxy now you want to re also register this function for the climate uh, activist so you say climate uh, activist dot register for execution again uh which is this one right here again call uh, that uh that uh tool right here and you can also pass in a description of the tool if you want to uh basically i actually actually i made an, an error right here so this is actually a register for uh, llm so i made an error right here so you say register uh, register for LLM this one right here and you can go ahead and pass in a description of this tool that you want so I'm going to say uh, let me just use double quotes right here and say web uh, browser web browser tool okay so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this right here and then paste it down here and then from for me I'm going to go ahead and change it now to give it to the rocket scientist so uh, the rocket scientist also has access to uh, the web browsing tool so that's basically what you need to do so once we have this done uh, and then we also have to make sure that this function is also a synchronous call a synchronous function sorry so once we have this you know go ahead and so wait for this function because searching the things so the internet can take a bit of time and since this is an asynchronous function we can actually wait for it right so we can wait for it to get done okay so that's all we need to do uh that's all we need to do to have this done 
that's all okay good so once you have this done uh again you can also go ahead, go ahead and uh, look at the previous code you can print out the 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 the, the function tool the direct tool registration if you want to but i'm not going to do that i'm just going to go ahead and simply uh, initiate the chat but again if you want to do this you can actually just copy the code paste it there and run it again to see how that works okay but i'm not going to do that in this video because we have already seen this in the other videos so just be a waste of your time or probably like so i'm not gonna i'm gonna skip over that so once i have this done i'm going to go ahead and now go ahead and instead of in in here uh now in here i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to have i'm going to initiate the, the chat so i'm going to use an asynchronous uh function again so we're going to say initiate I initiate initiate underscore chat just like this and then finally we got we write it so you say with you're going to go ahead and import also cache uh, a cache from from autogen so i'm going to go ahead and import that so we can use the cache function to be able to to uh, cache all these uh, responses so the caching can be done okay so i'm going to go up here and i'm going to go ahead and import it right here so i'm going to say from autogen right from auto auto autogen dot cache dot cache i'm going to go ahead and import that's one right here so good so once we have this then i'm going to go down here and i'm going to say with and i'm going to go ahead and simply say with and then i'm going to go uh say use the context menu we say uh cache dot uh disk you're going to cache it on disk uh so i'm going to call it uh, cache and i'm going to say we're going to say wait uh wait we're going to await this process i'm going to say user proxy uh dot a underscore a initiate basically what a initiate does simply say asynchronously initiate the chat so initiate that's what this, this basically means so asynchronous initiate chat because because previously we we're using uh initiate this initiate now the a part stands for asynchronously do initiate chat asynchronously so we need to pass in the manager and i think i deleted the manager so let me just go ahead and get it back here uh the manager is this uh, up here so let me just go ahead and grab grab the manager and then bring it uh all the way back here so let me just paste it right so to initiate the chat, you're going to pass in the manager, the chat. You're going to go ahead and pass in the cache. Okay, and the cache is going to be equals to the cache that you just created. Okay, so that's it basically. So the cache that you just created, you're passing it in right here. And so we're going to pass in the message and basically the message is anything that you want them to discuss. And we use the last message from here. So let me just go ahead and copy it, uh, which is this one right here. So copy it and just move it right here and then paste it here it so that's basically what you need to do and then make sure i save that so once you have this uh, function defined now we need to call this function so how to call an asynchronous function in python you're probably aware that that you can't call a synchronous function just by saying initiate uh, chat this wouldn't work so to call this function asynchronously you have to use the async library that we just imported async io and then say dot uh, dot run okay dot run and then pass in the function called now uh, the, the asynchronous function that you're calling that's basically how you can call asynchronous functions in python okay and uh, i quickly noticed one error that i made so one of the error issues i made an error right here so this right here i need to make all this to be asynchronous i, I quickly forgot that so let's just make this asynchronous so i'm going to say async right here and then uh with async right uh, asynchronous context manager and if you're going to go ahead and add in right here so i'm going to pass in also an asynchronous uh for loop so that's basically it so that's basically it. so a synchronous for loop and you're looping through this asynchronously so uh, r r uh, r and then sync for r in that that good blah blah and you're just basically searching for that result and then simply returning the result so that's basically something i skipped over yeah so that's basically how this whole asynchronous function should look like so once it's a synchronous function and then everything you need to use a synchronous context manager so you also need to use a synchronous uh, uh for loop for this to work so that's basically it so now let's uh, just make sure that we don't have any more errors so once we don't have any more errors we can simply go ahead and run it so make sure so this is a synchronous a uh, function okay oh uh, yeah so you're also awaiting this awaiting for this right here and also down here you're also awaiting for this user proxy that asynchronous call and then you pass in all that and then finally you run the function uh function call so now that's basically it now let's go ahead and actually run this and make sure it works Okay, good. So once you have this done, let's go ahead and try this code out. So I'm just going to go back inside of here and I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm in the right directory. So turn right to a section, section one, and I'm going to go ahead and clear this. So I'm going to say poetry, run Python, 
uh, 3 and then going to simply say part and then we say part 4.py okay run that so now we're going to uh, run this uh, code now all this code this code simply does uh, exactly what it did in the last video but now is instead of calling the functions the tools or the function that provide these agents synchronously it's going to be calling these uh, tools asynchronously so that's what basically uh, a synchronous uh, function calling in python basically works so good so now let's give this a bit of time and let's see how uh, this runs through okay so we get back the first response right here you can see that the rocket uh, rocket scientist to the chat master chat manager and then says blah 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 eco-friendly pro propellants okay like green 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 propellants that's one way we can make rockets uh, environmentally fr friendly and reusability like what spacex is doing with the falcon 9 i believe yeah and the star the, i think it's called i forgot the name of it yeah but basically you can see uh it's doing that exactly so climate activists are detail outlined out several crucial statements for designing environmentally friendly and efficient rockets blah, blah, blah. And you can see the conversation between those two agents so i uh, one of the things I, I wish they did was actually calling the tool i don't know sometimes they call the tool sometimes they don't call the tool it's just really uh, out of something out of my control at this point yeah so uh, about making the agents to call the tools one of the one of the techniques i found that can be helpful kind of like force the agents quote unquote force the agents to call these tools is by editing the prompts so let's try to go ahead and edit one of the prompts right here let's start with this row right here and what i want to do is simply right here let's say that um, make sure to let's say make sure to use the web uh, browser tool to uh to research to perform research to perform a research uh before giving uh your response okay so that's basically so i'm going to go, I'll go ahead and copy this right here uh okay this is copy that and i'm just going to okay so i'm going to go ahead and copy that and make add it right here so let's say uh make sure and then we paste that right here so good so we're going to say uh make sure to use the the web browsing tool to perform re research uh before giving your response so that's basically it so i have that i'm gonna go ahead and save that code so everything else remains the same okay so once you have everything done let's go ahead and actually try to run it again now if you run it again what is going to happen is going to return to you uh it's going to return to what it has already been that has already been cached onto the disk which is stored under under here in this there in this uh, hidden directory called cache so now we have, we have to go ahead and change the cache seed uh the cache seed in order to uh make a new cache so i'm going to go ahead and simply just specify any random number right here as a cache sheet so once we have it i'm going to go ahead and clear the terminal and then we can run the code one more time so once we go ahead and run the code one more time let's see and hopefully uh this uh, these agents are able to call these tools and uh, give us a response from their research that they performed on the internet great now you can see it's calling the tool so awesome right there you can see now it's calling the tool and you're actually going to get the response back from these tools and then now it's based on that response it's going to go ahead and generate the uh, an answer right there response so make sure one of the one of the ways you can force from my experimentation one of the ways you can force these agents to call these tools is by specifying it in their prompt that hey before you give me a response use this and these tools are provided to you make sure you always use the tools kind of something kind of like that basically forcing them to use these tools before giving you a response right so you can see now they are all using the tool each time uh, you can see the user proxy has used the tool because the user proxy is this executor but what is suggesting to uh, this function call is the, um, the rocket scientist is suggesting the function call and now the user proxy has called the function and now we get, get the response back based on this function so you can see now uh, we are using now the internet to be able to do researches uh, using the tool that we have and you're calling these tools asynchronously okay so one of these one of the ways of forcing quote unquote forcing these agents to use this uh, uh to use these tools to, to perform uh, web searches on the internet before getting you for a return to a response again if you're running this again if i run this again uh, let me click the terminal run this again it's going to return to me the old uh, response that it had stored because that's cached that response right so uh, it's just going to return to me the old response okay this uh, happens with performing a, a, a research uh, okay uh let's see let me see let me see right here to get a direct response so, mm, 
so it looks like you never awaited for this function so let's see where you have made a mistake so uh it looks like you're never waiting for this function so let's go like i'm glad you're getting this error so we can uh see what's wrong and you can be able to solve this so uh let me just go right here so you're going to say asynchronously and then uh this is the code at maximum search and if i perform that and then finally print out the results uh with asynchronous and then that's the, the code search and then finally says this uh, let me see let me say uh can you await this let me say await yeah let me see if that's gonna work so let's see if that's going to work but it works uh, sometimes it gives you this uh, error so i think you can just ignore it for now i don't know but you can let's let's uh wait for this to complete and now we can try on the asynchronous part where we are, we are waiting for this call this because this is asynchronous you are waiting for this call so let's uh try this out and let's see if that's going to work as well so clear the terminal and let's try this out one more time uh, hopefully it works and you don't get any errors again so let's see if that works uh this just this, this doesn't work so yeah it's actually returning to us a null value so i think this we can just do it like this is just just uh, ignore that warning for now okay so let me just uh, exit all this get the terminal and then if you run it again now everything should uh, work as fine so uh, i'll do more research and find out why sometimes sometimes it calls this function perfectly uh calls the tools perfectly sometimes it just gives you this kind of warning that so you see right now we didn't get any kind of warning right sometimes it gives you the warning so i'll do more research and find out what's uh what's the best way around it and i'll make another video uh, add on to this and let you guys know what's the best way around it so guys uh that's all for this video and that's basically how to perform a synchronous function calling or a synchronous function uh, tool calling within a group chat and this cannot this does not only work with group chat can also work with a single agent you see right now we have registered this tool for multiple agents you can also really create a single agent and register it for only that agent and that agent can be outside of a group chat and everything should work as fine right so guys, guys uh, thank you for watching so much that's all i wanted to ask about in this video if you guys have a, any suggestions any comments let me know in the comment section below again if you, had, you have enjoyed this video uh let let you can drop a like make sure that you drop a like you subscribe to the youtube channel and you share this video with anyone who you think might find it helpful and if you don't like the video make sure that you let us know why you don't like the video or any negative feedback i actually call them positive feedback because it help uh, improve the quality of the of the content that i make so again if you want to support me further to make high quality videos for you guys you can buy me coffee the links will be in the description of the video thank you guys for watching so much and see you the next one keep safe